Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we go down to Pine Ridge, I'm going to help solve a problem that many mothers are constantly faced with. If your youngsters don't like milk, or if milk doesn't agree with them, try giving them Horlicks, the original malted milk. Horlicks has many advantages over ordinary milk. Youngsters like it. You'll never have any trouble getting them to drink their Horlicks, whether you give it to them for breakfast, between meals, or just before going to bed. Then Horlicks is so digestible. Young and delicate digestive systems can easily and safely handle it. That's why so many medical and child-feeding authorities have always recommended Horlicks. Keep this in mind the next time your youngsters complain about taking their milk. Give them Horlicks. You can get a package, you know, from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. Children like both flavors. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, the disappointment over the fact that nobody put in an appearance at the unveiling of the statue Lum planned to present to the citizens of Pine Ridge was evidently more than the old fellow could stand. He left the store that afternoon and hasn't been seen or heard from since. Searching parties have been sent out, the mill pond is being dragged, and reports have been pouring in from all sections, and yet there is no definite word as to his present whereabouts. As we look in on Pine Ridge today... We find Abner and Grandpappy Spears down at the Jotham Down store. Abner is answering the telephone. Listen. Yeah, this is him. Huh? He is? Well, for the land sake. <laughs> well, uh, when did he get in? <laughs> well, I do know. What is it, Abner? What is well, it? well, tell him to get on over here. I just can't wait to see him hardly. All right. Well, well, much obliged for calling, Dick. Well, that's the word to relieve off of my mind. <laughs> and all right. Goodbye. I dog his grandpap Lum's back. Yeah, I heard he was. I heard you talking. When did he get in? Just a while ago. Uh, Dick said he uh, come out on a mail hat. <laughs> well, where in the world has he been all this time? Why, uh, Dick never said, and I never thought to ask him. I said he's coming right on over here, though. Well, I'm sure proud to hear you back. Yeah, me too. I'd about give up all hopes to ever seeing them again. Yeah, well, sir, I just can't hardly believe it so. I, I've just worried so much over it. Well, we ought to go down and tell the boys to quit dragging the mill pond. Yeah, yeah, they're just uh, wasting their time. He ain't in that mill pond now, I know. No. I, I'll send uh, Teddy for where to tell him. I, I don't want to leave a store here until Lama gets there. Uh, Cedric. Yeah, Cedric can stack that feed some other time. Yeah, uh, come here a minute, Cedric. We ought to telephone the sheriff, too, let him know we found it, or somebody did. Did you call me, Mr. Abner? Yeah, I said that. Lom's here. Well, hello, Mr. Well, where? Well, uh, he ain't here yet, but he's been found. He's been found. Was he in the mill pond like they thought he was? No, no, he's down at Dick Hudson's store. Well, I uh, found the goodness. <laughs> Looks like Mr. Dick would have saw him down there, don't it? <laughs> oh, well, they never found him down there, Cedric. Well, how they know he's there, then? Why, Dick just now called up and said he was there. He come in on the mail hack a while ago. Yeah, he ain't been here all the time, Cedric. He just got in town a few minutes ago. Yeah, uh, and I, I want you to go over to the mail pond, Cedric, and uh, tell Edgar Seastonk and that bunch of where to quit looking for him because he's found now. Yes, Mom. Well, I'll tell them, but I know they're going to be mad when they find out they've been dragging that pond over there for nothing. Well, I'll hurry up and get on over and tell them, for the longer they look, the madder they'll get. Yes, Mom, I'll tell them. I hadn't thought about that. That bunch is going to be aggravated at Mom, putting into all that bother. Yeah, yeah it's going to make Esther Seastone look awful foolish, for he's the one that was so sure that that's where they'd find him at. Yeah, yeah, he sure was. All right, now, Grandpa, we want to be sure now and not make no mention of that unveiling ceremony to Mom. Let's just try our best to make him forget about it if we can. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing to do. Yeah, he'll get over it in time. Well, I don't know, Grandpa. I'm just afraid that Mom will never be the same. He, he's going to feel like everybody in the community is down on him because nobody never showed up for the ceremony the other day. Yeah. Somebody ought to tell him it was Mose Moose's fault for telling everybody that the thing had been called off. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll tell him one of these days, but uh, don't want to tell him now. For we've got to cheer him up if we can. Yeah. Try to get him to uh, take the interest in the business there again. Well, I'm feared that Mom will never do that, though. He's, I know him too well. He, he's more than likely to give up. He's lost his ambition. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what I'm scared of too, Grandpa. 
And all it was so hard, you know, trying to make a name for himself. I, I'm just a fear now that he just turn out like Luke Spears. Like Luke Spears? Yes, I'm just a fear he would. Well, I hope not. That's the laziest mortal that ever drawed breath. I know Luke Spears is. Yeah, he is now. But he weren't till he tried to join the army during the war. He left out of here and they give farewell parties for him. Just made a regular hero out of him. Yeah. And it weren't a week till he come back, turned down on account of having flat feet. Yeah, I recollect him coming back disappointed. Nobody speaking to him hardly. Oh, he was all tore up over it, yeah. And he said then that if he weren't fitting to fight, he weren't fitting to work. That he'd never turn another hand. And he ain't. Oh, yeah. oh, his woman's had to make a living for him ever since. My, sure she has. If he hadn't opened up that restaurant down there, he'd have starved himself to death. All he does is sit up there and play checkers and swat flies. Yeah, yeah. All he does about the business is uh, just let her use his name for it. Luke Spears, Lusser, that's all he does. Well, sir, I'd hate to see Mom give up like Luke done. Then a man loses his ambition, Abner, he's a goner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks like a shame that it had to happen right at this time, too. Her well, mom was talking just the other day about getting into some new business. Want to invest that money me and him got in the bank. Get into something else, he said. Make millionaires out of it. Yeah, it's a shame. It's well, a shame. maybe you can talk him into it yet, Abner. Well, just wish I could get him interested in something. You know, worst so with mom, Grandpa, he ain't like me and you. He, Ain't got no family to encourage him none when he gets low in spirits this way. Yeah, there's the trouble right there. Yes, sir. He needs a good woman. Somebody dependent on him. Give him some responsibility. Yeah, yeah, he does that. I just wish that him and Evelyn would get married. Well, I don't believe they'll ever do it, Abner. Why, they're just plumb in love with one another. You can tell that. I thought sure her and him would get spliced a while back there when her and Frank Foster broke up. But it yeah. don't look like it's any closer to a match now than it ever was. No, no. And she'd marry him in a minute if he'd just pop the question. But I just don't believe that he's got no of enough to ask. No, no. Mom's all this talking, making his brags about what a great ladies' man he is. Yeah. <laughs> but when he gets around him, why, he don't know what to do with himself. Stand there on one foot and look down at the floor and loll his tongue against his cheek and giggle. That's yeah. all he does. <laughs> and he's a bashful fellow, I believe I ever seen him. Worst I ever seen him. <laughs> he's like overgrown boy. <laughs> Sure Every time a woman speaks to him, he's neck and ears gets his ready for it. You ever know? <laughs> <laughs> and he starts pulling on his mustache. All this. There you go. <laughs> I wish you'd hurry up. I'm curious to find out where he's been at all this time. Well, uh, he ain't been far. Uh, me and the sheriff went over to his house yesterday evening, and his clothes and beliefs are still there, so I know he never went far. Well, if he'd have been every place we've had reports of folks seeing him, he'd have covered half of this part of the county by now. Oh, and all that telephone rung over at my place all night long, folks saying that they'd saw him. Yeah, well, you had no more than hung up a receiver yesterday after you made that telephone call on the party line after they started calling down here. Yeah, yeah. Looks like there for a while that me and you was about the only ones in town that hadn't saw him. Yeah, well, of course, they was all trying to help them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There he comes, him and Dick Huddleston. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's old love. Yeah, sure well, you ain't changed the mind, have you? Look no. just the same. <laughs> well, I'm proud Dick come over with him, too, Abner. He can sort of help us steer him up. Yeah, yeah, well, we ought to call the folks on the party line, too, and let them all know he's got back all right. Yeah, yeah, we ought to do that after a while, Abner. There's lots of folks still on easy about it. Well, come in here, Law Matters. <laughs> howdy, Lum, howdy. Oh, uh, Swan, I never was so proud to see anybody in my whole life. <laughs> the gentlemen, gentlemen, howdy. Uh. I ain't dog it if you never pulled up iron stone. How are you? Where have you been? Well, sir, I've been on a little trip, Abner. Glad to see you. <laughs> Take your hand, too, Grandpad. Glad to see both of you. You say you've been on a trip? Yeah, Lum was just telling me he's been to Kansas City. Kansas City? Well, why in the world didn't you tell somebody where you're going? And it's all word to death around here. Had us dragging the mill pond for you and sent out searching parties. Had the sheriff out there this evening and he's got his whole force of working around trying to locate where you're at, Mom. We just know something bad had happened. Well, right? I do know. Yeah, Abner here was word to death over it, Mom. Yeah, there's folks calling down here every few minutes telling us that they'd saw you somewhere. Yeah, we'd get a call from somebody say they'd seen you over about Cherry Hill and... About the time we hung up for E.C. or somebody 20 miles the other direction say they just saw you go by there. They sure done it. They sure done it. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it always Well, to be right honest, I never knowed that was where I was going myself till I got there. 
I left out of here the other day. Uh, felt a tour up over that unveiling ceremony. I just decided I'd walk off and leave Pine Ridge and not never come back. Well, for the land thing. But I got up there and got to thinking things over and I don't know. There I was running away just like a coward. Just cause nobody come out to see me to present the statuary myself to them. So I just decided right then to come back here and make such a success of myself that folks here in Pine Ridge would be crawling around on their hands and knees begging me to let them put up a statuary of myself. Now, now, that's the time. That's the way I left to hear you talk. Good for you. Well, that's just what I told him, too. You did the right thing by coming back, Ron. We're all glad to have you. Well, thank you, Dick. Nice of you to say that. Yes, sir. I'm glad I went, and I'm glad to be back. Hi, grannies, I've got an idea now that I never would have had if I hadn't took this trip. Got an idea? Yes, sir. Me and you's going into a new business, Abner. A new business? We're starting tomorrow, getting ready for it. Well, you ain't aiming on getting yourself to the store here, are you? Oh, no, no. This won't interfere with the store business at all. Good. This is a business that Pine Ridge has been needing for a long time. Well, what is it, for goodness sake? What is we're, it, Mom? <laughs> we're going into the picture show business. Huh? Me and you is going to open up a picture show right here in Pine Ridge. I, Granny's out show. From King of the Hogs to Czar of the Movies. Did you hear about the recent test in Chicago of the Horlick Weight Control Plan? It proved conclusively the effectiveness and safety of the plan. The majority of the women taking part in the test actually lost on an average three pounds and four ounces in only ten days, and all felt fine at the end of the test. Try this plan yourself, exactly as these women tried it. It consists, very simply, of substituting a glass of Horlick's malted milk for a heavy, hard-to-digest lunch. That's all there is to it. The plan is effective because it helps you cut down on the calories. And it's safe because Horlicks is well-balanced in elements essential for growth and health. It's nourishing, sustaining, energy-giving. All you need to start the plan is a package of Horlicks malted milk. This you can get at any druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.